Wenji. Chinese President Xi Jinping has stressed peaceful development, openness, inclusiveness, and solidarity in pursuing the development goals of the Asia-Pacific region. In a written speech to the CEO Summit of this year's Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum in Thailand, Xi Jinping urged APEC member economies to strengthen cooperation to enable the region to be a leader in boosting the global economic recovery. The president also called for higher level opening up and connectivity and promoting economic upgrading to break new ground in the region's development. For more from the CEO Summit, Dusita Saokeo reports from Bangkok. The APEC CEO Summit is perhaps uh, the most influential meeting of business and government leaders in this Asia-Pacific region. But under the theme Embrace, Engage, Enable, this global gathering provides a unique opportunity for business leaders in the Asia-Pacific to engage in discussions with APEC economic leaders. Because policymakers, academics, CEOs, they all play a vital role in enabling better economic growth, social development and well-being of the people in this Asia-Pacific region. The Chinese president is in Thailand to attend the APEC economic leaders meeting and pay a visit to the country. Meanwhile, host Thailand says it is ready to welcome leaders for the APEC meeting. Anucha Nakasai from the Thai Prime Minister's office says they're looking forward to the gathering. The Thai government and its people are ready to warmly welcome leaders from around the world as the host of the APEC meeting. It is a gathering of global concern, and 21 economies from the Asia-Pacific region will meet here in Thailand. It will be the first offline APEC meeting after the two previous were held online. Leaders will meet face-to-face in Bangkok. Leaders from member economies will discuss a range of issues, including innovation, investment and trade in the Asia-Pacific region. China's Shenzhou 14 crew members have completed their third spacewalk since the start of their mission in June. But it's their first spacewalk since the addition of the Tiangong Station's second lab module earlier this month, completing the station's T-shaped configuration. Sun Ye has more from the Beijing Aerospace Control Center. The most important task for the day is completed. That is uh, installing uh, what they call a intermodule linking equipment. Uh, essentially, these are equipment that look like rods, uh, long thin lines, that link different modules. And with uh, these pieces of equipment, the intermodule linking equipment in place, Taikonauts were able to expand their scope of activities um, that they can move on their own. Or we can understand that they've expanded the area they can crawl on their own. If we put it in the distance, now the Taikonauts can head out from Wentian Space Lab Module and crawl to the end of Tianhe or Mengtian uh, Space Lab Module. NATO says the missile strike that killed two people in Poland was probably not an attack by Russia. Jens Stoltenberg said it may have been caused by a Ukrainian air defense system meant to counter a Russian aerial bombardment. Polish President Andrzej Duda also said there's no evidence that the missile was launched by Russia. The Russian Defense Ministry said the projectile was a Ukrainian missile. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said the deaths were a tragedy and that Ukraine's air defense and armed forces defend all of Eastern Europe. The EU's energy policy chief says the European Commission plans to propose a cap on natural gas prices after a meeting of energy ministers. The officials are expected to instruct the bloc's executive to move ahead with the proposal. The move aims to contain an energy crisis stemming from the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. The 27-country European Union has debated for months whether to cap gas prices as the bloc struggles to contain soaring inflation and energy prices. China has broken ground on a major underground iron ore mine project. The mine in Liaoning province is estimated to produce an annual 30 million tons of iron ore and 10 million tons of iron ore concentrate. The project is scheduled to be in operation in 2027. China is the world's largest importer of iron ore, with imports exceeding 917 million tons in the first 10 months of this year. That's the news. I'm Wenjie.